that if you asked the Libyan people, they would vote for a dialogue between the parties rather than a bombing of the parties. They don't want their country to be destroyed by depleted uranium or bombing or occupied by Western forces. They want their country to be stable and peaceful. And for that to happen, the violence needs to stop on both sides and from the external side. Like well. Tamara said, that knows a lot about this war on so-called war on terrorism is Cuba. Cuba is a country that's been facing terrorism from the United States government for over 50 years. Terrorism that's killed, taken the lives of thousands of Cuban people and including internationals who are in Cuba as well. And Cuba, in their war against terrorism, didn't harm anyone, anybody. They didn't use guns, they didn't use bombs, they didn't use planes, they didn't use tanks, they didn't use anything, they just used these five men who went to the United States to investigate, collect information on terrorist groups that were do, uh, doing acts of terrorism against the Cuban people. These five men collected the information and handed that information over to the United States government. These are five true fighters against terrorism. Five true Cuban heroes who have been in prison now for 12 years, over 12 years, for defending the people of Cuba and the people of the world against terrorism. And so we have a lot more information about these Cuban five anti-war, anti-terrorism heroes on the table over there, and I encourage you to get more information. This is the poster for our monthly protest action to free the five, happening April 14th from 4 to 5 p.m. in front of the United States Consulate, and I'll be handing information to everybody about that after I'm done speaking. Thank you very much. Now, the uh, U.S. government and President Obama have said the reason why there's no need for more pressure on Bahrain or even some intervention as there's been in Libya, is because the uh, king seems willing to have certain political reforms. So is there some sign of some reform? No, and I'm very disappointed from this hypocrisy that's coming from the White House. Uh, when there is a revolution in, in Egypt, Libya, and Tunisia, somehow we're supporting that even reluctantly. However, when it is in Bahrain, uh, I see this blatant support to the regime and allowing uh, uh, the regime with cold blood to kill innocent Bahrainis looks like somehow the Bahraini blood is, is less important than the Libyan or Egyptian blood. Uh, also, the State Department is issuing some weak and, 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 and very negative statements calling for both sides to, to restrain. I wonder what kind of restraint you want from an unarmed uh, Bahraini civilian. The restraint should come from the forces that using live bullets. So why do you think there is such hypocrisy? Because Bahrain is, is, is a fifth fleet base. Uh, there is also, I think, an agreement made between the Obama administration and the uh, Saudi government that uh, will give you the green light for a certain period of time, see if you can crush this movement. If not, we have a plan B. And we need your support in Libya. Therefore, what you've seen, that soon after the Saudi troops entered Bahrain, uh, there was a strong uh, support from the uh, GCC countries to the uh, no-fly zone, which they initially opposed. The Gulf Cooperation Council, it's under this rubric that the troops have gone in, if I understand it correctly, and, and because they're invited in, it's not considered a foreign intervention at, under normal international law. GCC Charter does allow countries to uh, seek help from neighboring GCC countries, Gulf Cooperation Council, if those countries were attacked from a foreign force if they were invaded by foreign force to protect the nation, to protect the people of that country. There is nowhere in the GCC charter that says that if a country, uh, the country can seek help from neighboring country or other GCC country to kill or, or, or to suppress a democratic movement in the, in the country. So this is an invasion. This is, you cannot call Saddam's uh, uh, um, invasion to Kuwait as an invasion and occupation and call the movement of Saudi Arabia into Bahrain something else. We know what else. these people are capable of. We know what these criminals are capable of. Over one million people dead in Iraq. Tens of thousands of people dead in Afghanistan. And we can go back further. Vietnam, Yugoslavia. We know what these wars and occupations mean. And this particular campaign, this is a reactionary counter-offensive against the amazing gains that have been made by people in North Africa and the Middle East over the last three months. Millions of people have been out on the streets demanding justice, demanding 
human rights demanding self-determination. And they are still out in the streets, in Yemen and in Bahrain. They are still out in the streets fighting against U.S. tax dictators. And they will stay there, and it's important that we stand there with them. And we demand not only no intervention in Libya, no bombing of Libya, but also U.S., U.K., U.N., Canada, France, NATO, out of the Middle East and North Africa, now. In this new era of foreign occupation, imperialist governments are shedding crocodile tears. They are talking about human rights. They are talking about justice, but they are sending bombs. Al Khalifa came to Bahrain in, nine, in 1790, so they've been ruling are close to that period. They've been ruling Bahrain for over 220 years. Since they came to Bahrain, they had this uh, hereditary dictatorship, which means the uh, father gives the rule to his son, and a uh, major uh, government post, actually over 80% held, or 70% held by the Al Khalifa uh, ruling family. And it's an, basically an autocratic, uh, authoritarian uh, rule where there is uh, no free or fair elections. Uh, human rights are violated. Torture is 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 a policy uh, against political uh, prisoners. Prisons uh, are full of political prisoners, and there is no uh, freedom, real freedom of press or expression. And but the government brought mercenaries in their uh, security forces so they can attack the majority. The military in Bahrain are full of mercenaries. There are uh, uh, the minority of the people who work in the military are Bahrainis. The overwhelming majority of them are brought up from uh, uh, neighboring countries like Yemen, Jordan, Syria, Pakistan, uh, and basically they were brought to to uh, brutalize the people of Bahrain. So you don't, you're not going to see defections there in the army. However, also in, in in addition, uh, guns are not allowed in the country. So normal citizens, uh, normal Bahrainis, Bahraini citizens don't have access to gun. So the people of Bahrain only have this this right, these peaceful protesters and trying to uh, appeal to the international community to apply pressure and stop the, the atrocities and the killing in the country but to turn into uh, uh, an armed conflict between the protesters and the government uh, it is just not possible in Bahrain. We're here today to say that silence and apathy in the face of oppression is shameful. We're here to say that silence in the face of oppression is shameful. There is a prophetic tradition which says the one who commits the oppression and the one who helps him and the one who is pleased with it, all three are partners in that crime. The oppressor today is Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa and his troops. And you just heard how they've oppressed and killed and tyrannize and imprison the people of Bahrain. Yes, it's the people of Bahrain, regardless of their sectarian and denominational affiliations. This is not a conflict between the Shia and the Sunni, no. This is a conflict between the oppressor and the oppressed, between the tyrant and the one who is being tyrannized, and between the people of Bahrain and the leader and the ruler of Bahrain. Down with Hamas! 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 And the helpers of the oppressor are the Saudi people, the Saudi government, and the government of the United Arab Emirates. Let's not even call them a government. They are monarchists. And today we've gathered here to say, shame on them. Is it not enough for the Saudi monarchy? Shame, 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 shame on Hamas! 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 Is it not enough for the Saudi government and the Saudi rulers that they oppress their own people, that they have to go across the border and oppress some more people? If they even have a shred of dignity, if they even have a shred of humanity, if they even have a shred of conscience, they should pull back their troops from Bahrain. 
They should pull back their goons from Bahrain. Al Saud, Al Saud, you are going down. 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 And then there are people who are pleased with the oppression. I like to think of them as people who are silent in the face of oppression. And today you've shown us you are not silent in the face of oppression. But those who are silent, well, this is the time to speak up. If you are silent, then is the time for you to clarify your stand and tell us where you stand. And I ask the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Lawrence Cannon, I ask him, what does it mean that you're willing to send six CF-18 fighter jets over Libya? But when it comes to Bahrain, let me quote for you what he has to say. When it comes to Bahrain, he says, Canada urges the government of Bahrain. But what does it mean to urge? When it comes to Bahrain, he says, Canada is concerned. I ask you, what does this political jargon mean that we're concerned and we urge people? Let me translate this political jargon for you. It means we don't really care. Because if we cared, we would have pulled back our people from the consulate of Bahrain. We would have sponsored a resolution in the United Nations against the rulers of Bahrain. If we really cared, we would have reprimanded our friends in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. But today, you people have shown us that you really care. You people have shown us that you really care for humanity. And I like to think that this gathering is a very blessed gathering. It's a moment of blessing at this moment. It's a place that is very blessed. And therefore I ask you to raise your hands and join me in prayer as you pray for the people of Bahrain. I will read a prayer and say Amin after me as loud as you can. Bahrain became an independent country in 1970-71. The relationship between the United States and Bahrain started in mid-50s. And then Bahrain was chosen to be the uh, uh, the base for the fifth fleet Bahrain and, and the government of Bahrain the Al Khalifa ruling family enjoyed a very strong uh, robust relationship with different US administration tonight I'll have a statement His Majesty will have a statement and we'll ask you all to leave we've got some we've got some business to do first uh, Your Majesty welcome the Oval Office it is such an honor to have you here uh, America has got a great friend in the Kingdom of Bahrain it's a place where we've had long-standing relations. It's a place where we've had mill-to-mill uh, uh, -mill relations for, I think, nearly 50 years. And uh, you have been a, a stalwart when it comes to peace. Where uh, the United States are going to protect Bahrain uh, from any intervention when it comes to any intervention from Iran or any other country, while uh, Bahrain give the United States a complete access uh, uh, military, uh, whether it's Air Force or the Navy, to uh, uh, its base in the country. We here in the United States pay annual rent uh, for that base and also give Bahrain security and military aid every year. On February 14th, uh, the people of Bahrain came on the street demanding uh, constitutional change, demanding free and fair elections, uh, end of gerrymandering based on sectarian uh, uh, background. Uh, demanding the resignation of the Prime Minister who has been ruling the country for 42 years. However, when they were faced with brutal force, so many lost their life, the demands elevated to removal of the uh, uh, ruling regime from Bahrain. So right now, uh, despite the invasion, despite the killing, despite the, uh, the massacres that took place, the resiliency in the people of Bahrain is still there, the defiant, they are uh, still protesting. Uh, they are still calling for uh, their their rights to be respected and, and, and to be given and for the ruling regime to uh, leave Bahrain because they don't consider them part of Bahrain. <laughs> Down, down with the crowd! Down, down with the crowd!